very much. Okay. Madam uh, Stefania Giannini, UNESCO Assistant Director General for Education. Mr. Widraogu, uh, the Director of Human Resources, Science and Technology of uh, African Union Commission. Uh, Professor Amado Leopoldo, ECOWAS Commissioner in charge of education, science and culture. Mr. Deputy Secretary General of the African University Association. Ladies and gentlemen, dear partners of uh, the Coalition for Education, dear UNESCO Regional Directors and uh, UNESCO Head of uh, Offices, dear UNESCO staff, dear colleagues, dear invitees from uh, universities who are with us. It is a great pleasure for me and for Anne Therese Ndongjata, the UNESCO Regional Director for Eastern Africa, who is co-organizing this webinar with us, to welcome all of you at this webinar dedicated to COVID-19 and higher education in Africa, the challenges and solutions through ICTs, e-learning, distance education, and digital inclusion. As we all know, to face COVID-19, great majority of African countries have taken measures, including closure of schools and universities. On, our, on the side of UNESCO, we can say that COVID-19 is today a kind of eye opener on the weaknesses and challenges of African education systems. And uh, all African education authorities have taken measures to assure continuity of education in this pandemic period. From our side, and under the leadership of the UNESCO Director General and uh, the UNESCO Assistant Director General for Education, who is with us this morning. Our organization has been very active, mobilizing partners to assist our member states to face the challenges and assure education continuity. The today's webinar on higher education is taking place at a time when African states are gradually renewing with the reopening of schools, universities, and administration. The main goal of this webinar is to discuss the challenges of higher education in the context of COVID-19, to exchange on how the global coalition members who are many connected today can help to face the challenges and also to share ideas on how to build more resilient higher education systems in Africa. Our, our webinar is therefore focused on exploring solutions. Finally, I would like to thank again, Madam Giannini Stefania, our UNESCO Director, Assistant Director General for Education, who is the arch architect of the Global Coalition for Education and who is at the front, front, the forefront of the Worldwide Partnership for Education and who has kindly accepted to be with us this morning. I also want to thank all the speakers African Union, from the African Association of Universities, from ECOWAS, from the Pan-African Universities, and all our partners that are Huawei, Wedong, Microsoft, UNESCO IIT, UNESCO ICE Category 2 Center in Shenzhen, NetDragon, CD Network, Star Time Group, Course, uh, Coursera, Hamdan bin Mohammed Smart University, etc., who have all accepted to be with us this morning. With this, it's now my pleasure to, to invite Madam Stefania to take the floor for her opening remarks. Stefania, please. Thank you very much, uh, 
Ido, thank you very much. And uh, uh, let me, Your Excellencies, uh, dear, dear colleagues, uh, really to, to, to start uh, telling you that it's a real great pleasure uh, for me to be with you today. And uh, I see <laughs> virtually around this, uh, this table, uh, really uh, every strategic partner we can have uh, and we can, we can say that matters in higher education today. So it's really quite timely to, to dedicate our reflection and our webinar uh, in, uh, in a special time and at a particular moment of this special time, because uh, as you know, societies, countries all around the world gradually begin to easy lockdowns. So it's a very interesting time also to reflect a bit uh, about some lessons already re learned and, and something that uh, for sure is still to be uh, more well developed. And I would like to start by praising the ambitious measures uh, that uh, has been taken uh, so far by governments of Africa to ensure learning continuity. Uh, you know, still today we have uh, some uh, 1.2 billion students and young people uh, around the world uh, who are affected uh, by heavily, heavily affected by the closure of schools and universities uh, to, due to, the, to this crisis. And uh, we can say, uh, honestly, uh, from our privileged uh, global observatory that no country was prepared for such an unprecedented and absolutely unpredictable disruption of education. All different levels of education, the most vulnerable segments of society are most affected. And we estimate that some, uh, some uh, uh, 500 million students simply have no access to education. So just starting from these numbers, uh, you can understand uh, also the approach that UNESCO uh, from the beginning, very beginning of this crisis uh, uh, had. And uh, thanks, uh, Ido, for mentioning uh, uh, myself as the architect. I would like to really to be something like this, but really it's, it's a bit an architecture, this global coalition, uh, really, we, we wanted to, to, to start from the very beginning beginning and uh, that has been announced officially uh, by our Director General, uh, Ms. Audrey Azoulay, who is quite keen uh, personally to, to develop uh, this, uh, this uh, new kind of partnership. So let me go back quickly to, to the situation like it is now. Uh, our survey um, from a UNESCO University chair recently uh, found that uh, internet connectivity, social isolation, uh, and uh, a kind of general uh, anxiety, you can say, and financial concerns were considered among the top challenges uh, facing learners uh, studying remotely. And in many countries across the continent, but not only here in Africa, we have witnessed the similar uh, challenges, the similar uh, barriers. Curricula that are not yet digitalized, the lack of capacity and expertise, gaps in connectivity, uh, electricity, and uh, appropriate technology infrastructure. So, to cut it short, a lack of software and hardware to keep education going. And we have entered into an entirely new teaching and learning paradigm, what you can define uh, in an uncharted territory, uh, which uh, somehow oblige uh, all of us uh, to think differently and act differently within this crisis and uh, looking at the future uh, beyond the crisis and also the, 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 more, the more far and uh, remote future in education. Uh, as the UN agency, uh, UNESCO has been leading uh, this, uh, this global change response uh, through peer learning for ministers and educators, uh, sharing solutions and also forging, as I said uh, before, some kind of new alliances to, to support countries, which is our main mission, of course, uh, delivery at country level. Inclusion, equity and partnerships are uh, the key, uh, the three key words uh, uh, which uh, are at the heart of our response. Uh, 
Global cooperation is the only answer. I think that uh, multilateralism can really become stronger uh, within this new exercise. And it's precisely here that our cooperation with the African Union, uh, ECOWAS, and the Association of African University and the UE more takes on its full meaning to help member states ensure the continuity of courses. This crisis, let me say, is a, is, a, is a kind of call for university to be all the frontiers, uh, the front runners, the vanguard of the transformation required to build back on more resilient and cooperative uh, foundations. Uh, this means uh, public support for tertiary education uh, to defend public research and innovation. This means uh, uh, this means really transdisciplinary approaches to address complexity and wider knowledge sharing to unlock solutions. And uh, it's on uh, the basis of knowledge, innovation and professional training generated in universities that we, we can really find uh, the so-called new normal. Uh, also looking at the, 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 the mission of the 2030 agenda and uh, the mission we have at the UN uh, to build uh, a better society uh, which can look uh, uh, for new solution for the planet, uh, peace and prosperity. And you know, it's also more than ever essential that the global community comes together and uh, I can say can really boost, uh, can really foster universal access to information and knowledge through open educational resources. Uh, this COVID-19 crisis uh, should be sized as an opportunity. You know, we have the dark side of the coin, but we also have the, the tremendous opportunity to strengthen the culture of online courses, to, to detect, to monitor, to evaluate the quality of these uh, e-learning solutions. Uh, and I think that Africa can really become uh, a, a very interesting laboratory to do that. It was in response to this crisis that UNESCO together with international organization uh, launched the global coalition and now we have more than uh, 90 partners uh, and uh, it's creating uh, something like a global movement uh, of solidarity and innovation and we're sure that uh, this is not a structure a new mechanism but it's a culture and a new mind that we bring after the crisis uh, and that will really help us to foster the, the, the roadmap of SDG4 in a, in a more efficient way. The presence of some of our main partners here today to share their technological solution, to help our schools and universities uh, and to ensure learning con continuity is absolutely very much welcome. And the UNESCO regional offices in Africa have prepared COVID-19 response plans uh, that are absolutely fully aligned with the country strategy to respond to this crisis. I want to thank warmly my colleagues, uh, especially Edu and Antares today for their big efforts, for their passion, their commitment to this mission. And let me say that, that how can I say, that the, the digitalization process of all courses uh, from primary school, uh, we see of course all the, 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 the journey, the, the educational journey in our observatory uh, to higher education, uh, connectivity and solutions based on uh, solar energy, uh, are among priorities uh, uh, for increasing uh, the reach and resilience of learning institutions. I think we must capitalize on this crisis. We must capitalize to promote the routing of a culture of online education in our universities and schools, uh, including uh, and anticipate, I should say, potential future pandemics or potential future crises, uh, including due to climate change, which is still uh, in the background, but it is still uh, some important issues to be addressed in the in the roadmap we have. Uh, research, basic research, applied research, higher education, uh, um, you know, uh, teaching and learning are really at the very heart of, uh, of SDG4 and African University and, uh, and uh, the, the scientific community play, in my view, a front role, find, contextualize, and, uh, you know, solutions uh, to the multiple challenges we are facing. This means re revitalizing research laboratories, launching research action projects through 
and across uh, uh, different sectors, from health to education for sure, but I want to mention food security, agriculture and climate change. And this, this means also the last point I want to, to underline, the, this means uh, to, to tap uh, the potential of AI and big data for development. This laboratory we are building is more and more increasingly founded on good data and big data, which can help us to address the challenges and, the, and see the opportunities within this crisis in education, for education, for the future. And only multilateral approach to the governance of education and research um, will really uh, achieve results uh, expected. And, uh, and, uh, and that's why we are we are really pushing uh, about that so i think that uh, higher education across this dynamic continent uh, can really become more and more a catalyst uh, for economy uh, for economic recovery innovation uh, and uh, the new normal we need and we have to build together so this is a matter of economic wisdom and social responsibility critically and thank you very much for your attention thank you Edio, for your great uh, moderation and uh, and uh, all the the job you are doing with our colleagues in the continent thank you very much uh, stefania for these uh, warm words to to us you said it all we said that this webinar is dedicated to solution and you said it uh, uh, whatever countries do to reopen the schools to ensure education continuity whatever unesco can give us support the solution the final solution is to really build new alliances and build global cooperation and make sure that uh, partnership with, uh, works that's where we can find the solution to the challenges and you also uh, concluded by uh, uh, putting emphasis on the fact that uh, covid unfortunately is also an opportunity to put the finger on some challenges and where we have to reflect more on how to ensure more uh, relevant online courses how can we support distance learning and contribute to build the resilience of uh, uh, education systems for future challenges and uh, i really also uh, we can also note the finger that you put on the role of research that can be should be now more uh, uh, supported at country level to really make sure we draw all the lessons from this covid and uh, uh, based on these lessons to rebuild our education system and uh, Finally, I think that it's a good news that uh, you say that uh, we are going to SDG 4, for which we have the leadership, we will necessarily draw a lesson from the COVID and see how we revisit the content of uh, SDG 4 to make it more relevant to the need of the country. Thank you very much for all this uh, very good uh, input, Stefania. It's now my pleasure to give the floor to some uh, key partners who are, are going to deliver some uh, goodwill messages uh, to us and um, uh, the first person to take the floor uh, will be uh, Madam Ayuna Eziakonwa uh, Onochi, sorry for the pronunciation, she is the regional director for UNDP and the R UNDP. Madam, please take the floor. Uh, excuse me, Madam, before you take the floor, our technicians, please, some people have their mic open and they are making noise. Can you please look at it and then see what's happening? Press, please check that. Uh, use the open mics, press it, please. So, Madam, you, uh, Madam Ayuna, you have the floor, please. Thank you, um, moderator, and uh, good morning from New York. Um, I want to start by thanking UNESCO uh, for associating UNDP with this webinar. Um, and thank you, Anne Therese, for your passion uh, for education and for the young uh, on this continent. Uh, it's been a pleasure really working with you uh collectively to do what we can uh for the continent in the middle of this crisis um asg uh who spoke before me i want to really thank you for those words you know economic wisdom that is what it's all about uh, you know it's a very powerful way to really position uh this all-important topic you know the education is at the heart of human development uh, it is also central 
uh, to the recovery efforts that we will will be pulled off uh, post COVID-19. And in a frighteningly unequal world, uh, world that we're living in today, education remains our best chance at equalizing our world. Um, and if we just recall for a second uh, Nelson Mandela's words, where he says education is the most powerful weapon we can use to change the world. And everyone would agree today that we are living in a world that has changed at its fundamentals. And that world now has to be accompanied by new wisdom that can only come from the way we handle education. If we are to create a world of prosperity for all, we must invest in education to ensure that it is of the right quality and that it can be accessed by all. It is a core ingredient in the principle of leave no one behind, which the UN is championing. Africa, a continent of 1.3 billion people and projected to have close to 20% of the world's youth population in less than 10 years, has long battled with issues of quality, standards and relevance of curriculum in education. Each year, millions of graduates get out of African institutions with skill sets that have no takers in the job market. And while important progress has been made towards universality in primary education, incidental fees and costs related to secondary and higher education have made higher education an unaffordable luxury for many in Africa. How can that situation help Africa position in science, in research, in technology? It's practically impossible unless we invest differently. Regions affected by both conflict and violent extremism and the rigors of internal displacement or refugees further complicate access as, and, and quality as well as the security concerns take over. These matters have been described as the learning crisis that has bedeviled education in Africa for years. But if the risk was seen as largely one about the end product at the close of a formal education cycle, the tables have suddenly turned and matters now require immediate action, which is why this webinar today is absolutely vital. Overnight, We've seen a staggering 330 million plus learners out of school in Africa. And resulting from uh, mitigation measures against, uh, uh, against uh, COVID-19. This is not all. Close to 9 million teachers are not able to be involved in teaching activities from home as we've seen in some parts of the world where the infrastructure is available. So one wonders what is happening to those teachers and the skills that they have or must now acquire. This is what we mean when we talk about leaving people behind. Effectively, all with limited exceptions of Africa's learners have been left behind, owing to absence of the infrastructure of learning on digital platforms. And while we often think of vulnerable context as a smaller group, currently all of Africa is vulnerable from the perspective of disruptions uh, of, in education. While some governments have started to open schools, legitimate concerns remain about these approaches where the pandemic is still in its infant stage of transmission. Realistically, and if health considerations determine length of school closures, it is foreseeable that we could be looking at a much longer period. This is not, it doesn't contribute to anything at the, that is positive at all levels of education, but even at higher levels of education, it bodes really a bleak moment for the continent because what will these young people be doing? Uh, there is that saying that an idle mind is the devil's workshop. 
and we think of youth with their energy, with their enthusiasm, with their restlessness, with their ambitions, with their thirst for knowledge and engagement now being left idle. What will that mean for security? Efforts have been made in some countries to use low technology solutions such as radio and TV uh, based learning. Here too, issues of, issues of reaching uh, of reach uh, raise critical inequalities that require urgent action. At the United Nations and in the context of the regional United Nations Sustainable Development Group, which I have the privilege to chair in the Africa region, we have developed with the support of UNESCO and, and UNICEF, and Antares is very much at the center of this, an emergency action plan on COVID-19, a central piece of which is the development of a strategy to empower African learners with an e-learning in with e-learning in the period during and after COVID. And this is something we have the pleasure to de de deploy the rest of the UN system, all of the UN system uh, to support. So I come today as a spirited cheerleader, pleased with the initiative you have taken to engage the private sector and all other players to lift Africa out of the setback we are witnessing with disrupted learning. I also come to this conversation as one with the calling. Having spent uh, quite a part of my early career as, as, as an educator, I, I know firsthand why we need to act and act quickly. And I bring you three key messages. One, Africa cannot wait. The goals Africa has set for itself in Agenda 2063, and which we all support from the Sustainable Development Group, require Africa's diamond, its people, to be fully equipped to drive its industrial revolution in agriculture, in services, in maximizing its wealth for its development, and in leading the fourth industrial revolution. And so, as you deliberate today and share experiences, prioritize action now. The seeds you sow today have guaranteed dividends in Africa's green, agriculture and food security, blue, marine lakes and ocean economies, and away from brown, clean technology revolutions. The human capital you are investing in, in, in this will guarantee our common future of a prosperous Africa and a prosperous world. Number two, because of the core public good that education is, I want to encourage all of us in this webinar today to use public-private partnership models. With you bringing the technologies as governments invest the infrastructure initially. But because of the scale of the challenge, I would like to challenge all of us to invest in Africa's digital infrastructure. It makes business sense seeing the value universal reach to 1.3 billion people would do also uh, for your companies. This is important in ensuring we build resilience into Africa's education systems. The third and last, let's be inclusive. Following a rights-based approach and targeting all levels, primary, secondary, and higher education, as well as TVET and non-formal education in alignment with international standards of, of availability, accessibility, acceptability and adaptability. Colleagues, friends, ladies and gentlemen, knowledge is power. Information is liberating. Education is the premise of progress in every society, in every family. These are the words of Mr. Kofi Annan, which I leave with you today. And I await with much anticipation to hear uh, the results of, of these actions on the ground. I thank you. Thank you much, Madam Auna, for these uh, very inspiring words. You, you said it all. We know we, we, are pretty, we, we note that uh, you started by uh, laying great emphasis, uh, emphasis on the power of education as cornerstone. You even use another stronger word that uh, education is a core ingredient to face development and uh, really we notice it. Your presence is very important for us because as uh, Stefania was saying, 
uh, about the importance of uh, uh, achieving global uh, cooperation and partnership to, to meet the objectives. For us in UNESCO, we strongly believe in the, in the UN reform and in deliver as one. And uh, in all our actions, we try to mobilize the other UN agencies to support, to work together to make it happen. For the SDG4 on education, we are at the country level really working closely with other UN agencies to make it happen. And uh, we appreciate your participation to this uh, webinar. And uh, I would like to really say that uh, your three uh, final key uh, messages are very important and we have noted them very, uh, uh, very well and we'll uh, make sure they are uh, taken on board. Thank you very much, Madam, for uh, uh, being with us. Uh, can I now give the floor to uh, Professor Amado Leopoldo, uh, who is the commissioner, ECOWAS commissioner in charge of education, science, and uh, culture. Professor Amado, you have the floor, please. Madame Assistante, la Directrice Générale de l'UNESCO pour l'Éducation, Monsieur le Directeur Régional de l'UNESCO, Madame et Monsieur, Monsieur le Président de l'Association des Universités Africaines, chers participants, euh, prévu pour cet événement bien avant la crise sanitaire actuelle à laquelle nous sommes confrontés, nous nous saluons très chaleureusement cette rencontre, non seulement parce que c'est important, transversal, transversal et holistique, mais aussi parce qu'il offre l'occasion pour approfondir les réflexions sur l'éducation en général et plus particulièrement sur l'enseignement supérieur dans le contexte d'une crise sanitaire. En effet, depuis 1998, la Banque mondiale avait démontré le rôle crucial d'éthique dans le développement mondial, notamment à travers de son indice de développement humain préparé par le programme des Nations Unies pour le développement PNUD, intitulé « Utiliser la technologie pour le développement humain ». Cependant, malgré la reconnaissance de l'importance d'éthique, malheureusement, la création d'une société d'information en Afrique, notamment par le bias d'éthique, reste un mirage pour les crescentes majorité de quelques 1,3 milliard de citoyens du continent. En effet, bien que l'Afrique compte 10 CCs des 30 économies avec plus puissant en 2013 et 2014, cela en rapport de la Banque mondiale, les pays africains, notamment l'Afrique subsaharienne, sont encore loin de traduire ces gains en amélioration de la condition de vie de nos populations. Ainsi, bien que l'Afrique soit la deuxième région de la croissance plus rapide du monde, sa cohérence et son rythme de croissance, actuellement inférieur à 5%, sont insuffisants pour soutenir positivement une réponse technologique capable de lisser l'économie. Selon un ouvrage publié par l'Association pour le développement de l'éducation en Afrique, ADEA, intitulé « Infrastructures technologiques et utilisant l'éthique dans l'éducation en, en Afrique inaperçue ». L'éthique offre des possibilités vastes et variées de croissance économique, des meilleurs services, des services de santé améliorés, et rend également l'éducation plus fluide, plus efficace et plus accessible à l'échelle mondiale. Toutefois, Citant les indicateurs de développement mondial de 2011 et les données de la Banque mondiale de 2002, les documents indiquent que l'utilisation de téléphone pour 1000 habitants était de 125 en Afrique du Sud, 89,8 en Tunisie, 77 au Botswana, 75 au, au Égypte, 10,3 au Kenya, 8 au Ghana, 4 au Mozambique, 3.1 en Éthiopie, 2.6 en Ouganda, contre 709 en Norvège, 600 
1999 en Suisse, 664 aux États-Unis. Pour le ratio de l'ordinateur pour 1000 habitants, les mêmes sources indiquent que des données de 50,7 pour l'Afrique du Sud, 31 pour Botswana, 15,3 en Tunisie, 12 en Égypte, 6,4 au Nigeria, 4,2 au Kenya, 2,6 au Mozambique et 2,5 en Ouganda, contre 510,5 aux États-Unis, 461,9 en Suisse et 446 en Norvège, ce qui donne à cette disparité une idée de retard structurel accumulé pour l'Afrique au domaine de TIC. En effet, en effet l'Afrique est confrontée à l'énorme défi de l'électricité et des services publics dans notre veine des éléments clés pour la croissance de l'ensemble du continent. Des milliers de personnes ont encore un assez limité aux infrastructures énergétiques et aux services publics, ce qui donne l'impression que l'Afrique a encore un long chemin à parcourir pour résoudre ces problèmes les plus élémentaires, malgré les améliorations significatives de l'utilisation des téléphones mobiles et des progrès timides en termes d'accès à l'ordinateur et à l'Internet. Dans ce contexte, le concept de la société d'information et du savoir ne peut être efficace en Afrique qu'avec l'introduction de politiques efficaces et d'une volonté politique forte et authentique, authentique contre les maux endémiques du continent, notamment la corruption, conflits armés, pauvreté, analphabétisme, faible taux d'approvisionnement en eau, électricité, éducation, santé, etc., afin que le continent puisse se positionner à l'avant-garde de la course au développement dans laquelle l'éthique joue un rôle majeur. Cependant, l'Afrique ne doit pas être une société statique et rester indifférent aux progrès technologiques au cours dans le monde s'il veut prendre le train de développement et rattraper le temps perdu avec les conflits, l'instabilité, la corruption et la mauvaise gouvernance. C'est pourquoi nous considérons que l'intention des pays africains d'intégrer l'éthique dans l'éducation et la formation devrait tenir compte de tous ces facteurs décrits ci-dessus afin d'éviter les échecs prématurés et les efforts inutiles. Il est vrai que les incertitudes introduites par la pandémie de COVID-19 causent au nombre d'effets négatifs sur les économies et par conséquent, les plus, des pays plus, plus faibles prendre un temps de reprise important et défini. En effet, aucune autre, autre, aucune autre crise n'a causé autant de dommages au système éducatif du monde entier en si peu de temps. Et dans ce cadre, l'UNESCO a lancé une coalition mondiale partenaire pour une réponse mondiale au COVID-19, y compris les principales organisations des Nations Unies, les organisations internationales et le secteur privé, où les géants du secteur numérique marquent également en présence, acceptant tous de travailler ensemble pour aider le système éducatif à réduire les perturbations indéfinies du système d'éducation et de l'avenir. Ainsi, les 52 ou bien 53 États africains ont imposé la fermeture d'écoles et des établissements d'enseignement au niveau national pour empêcher la propagation du COVID-19. Avec la fermeture généralisée des écoles et des universités, le secteur d'éducation et plus précisément l'enseignement supérieur a connu un revirement qui a obligé à considérer son développement par le biais du renforcement de TIC comme une alternative à l'enseignement euh, enseignement classe. C'est la raison pour laquelle la CDAO a de grandes attentes lors de cette conférence, dans laquelle nous espérons que des questions importantes comme les suivantes sont considérées. La massification de l'utilisation des ordinateurs portables, 
le placement de la technologie numérique au service de, so service de soutien aux citoyens et de la société, la, la massification de l'Internet, l'utilisation accrue des réseaux à large bande de, et de cloud, l'utilisation intensive des plateformes de vidéoconférence, l'utilisation de nouveaux modèles et de nouveaux paradigmes de fonctionnement des organisations, la promotion d'investissements plus importants et de meilleure qualité dans les infrastructures de télécommunication et de technologies d'information. Dans ce contexte, la question se pose de savoir comment le numérique peut contribuer à trouver des réponses à cette crise, puisque nous sommes confrontés à un problème mondial de santé publique qui a pour conséquence non seulement la réduction de la mobilité, mais aussi le défi de maintenir les universités et l'enseignement supérieur en Afrique performantes face au défi de la crise COVID-19 et correlativement au défi de l'introduction et renforcement de l'intelligence artificielle. Sans faire de doute, je dois reconnaître que nous sommes confrontés à un moment unique qui apportera certainement une augmentation significative des investissements dans la télécommunication et les technologies d'information, aujourd'hui et dans la période post-Covid, avec la mise en place des réseaux à large bande afin d'assurer une croissance vertigineuse de l'utilisation des ordinateurs portables et des clouds, ainsi que le développement de la cybersécurité et des systèmes d'intelligence artificielle de telle sorte qu'on puisse améliorer les conditions de télétravail, de télééducation, ainsi que la télémédecine, entre autres, pour qu'on puisse vraiment effectuer tout cela en condition de, 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 de sécurité et de manière plus efficace. Dans ce travail global, la CDAO est, à côté, est côté, côté à côté avec UNESCO, à la fois dans la promotion de bonnes pratiques et aussi dans la recherche permanente des solutions technologiques et concrètes pour la mise en œuvre réussie et à la plus grande échelle de LRN. Entre autres défis que nous avons en commun, cela semble être une raison forte pour renforcer notre partenariat existant parce que nos visions sont complémentaires et inexorablement, notre objectif et notre groupe cible sont aussi les mêmes. Soit dit en passant, notre présence ici dans ce important forum n'est pas, pas que la preuve. Alors, nous en profitons pour remercier l'invitation et augurer les meilleurs succès à cette réunion. Merci beaucoup de votre gentillesse et de votre attention. Merci. Merci beaucoup, euh, monsieur, euh, monsieur le commissaire euh, éducation. Uh, thank you really very much for... Uh, your speech, uh, we can we note that uh, on the basis of very relevant uh, statistics, you have uh, and, uh, put the finger on uh, the delay that our continent uh, has taken and uh, uh, in the area of uh, technology and ICT uh, with uh, on the basis of this relevant statistics that you have indicated. And we are very happy that uh, you also uh, indicated a, a, a way of hope. There is a window for hope by giving some areas where the countries, uh, the continent should invest more. Uh, and you mentioned, among others, uh, the importance of uh, promoting ICT for all, to, uh, supporting the research in the universities, investing more on research on uh, artificial intelligence, etc., which are areas that uh, we can explore to uh, face the challenges. And I'm very happy also that uh, you ended your speech by uh, uh, appraising and uh, telling the availability of ECOWAS to continue uh, to reinforce the partnership with UNESCO to work closely together uh, to meet the development challenges in our region, uh, things that uh, we are already doing. And uh, thank you very much to you and all the team of ECOWAS for the good and active partnership that uh, we have, uh, UNESCO have with, uh, with your organization. Thank you very much. Uh, it's now my pleasure to give the floor uh, to Mr. Jonathan Mba, who is the Deputy uh, Secretary General of African Association Universities. 
uh, we are very sorry to note and we wish him quick recovery. The, the Secretary General, Mr. Etienne Eile, even uh, the day before yesterday we spoke and he confirmed his participation, he prepared his presentation, but unfortunately yesterday he has some uh, health challenge and he cannot make it and he asked Mr. Jonathan to step in. So, Mr. Jonathan, thank you very much for uh, joining us and uh, please take the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Distinguished online meeting participants, ladies and gentlemen, I stand on the already established protocol to welcome you and also to thank UNESCO for inviting AAU as a partner to this important webinar discussion, which is in line with the association's current activities designed to minimize the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on the core functions of our member higher education institutions. As you rightly mentioned, uh, my boss, Professor Hile, is not able to join, and so he has asked me to read his message on his behalf. The Association of African Universities empathizes with all African higher education institutions and other partners affected directly or indirectly by the 2019 coronavirus disease COVID-19 pandemic. The association recognizes that the African higher education institutions have been challenged by this crisis to revise and devise creative and innovative ways to continue the academic calendar in the face of restrictions to physical interaction and travel and the disruptive lockdowns. As the apex body for African higher education, AAU has noted with concern the challenges posed by COVID-19 pandemic on the core functions of teaching, learning, and research, and acknowledges and understands that the restrictions associated with the COVID pandemic inevitably mean necessary changes must be made to how African higher education continue their core program. The AAU has taken immediate steps to help our member institutions adjust and adapt to the challenges posed by the pandemic so that their core functions are not adversely affected. One of the initial activities of AAU as a result of the coronavirus was to administer an online needs assessment survey to African higher education institutions with a view to finding out their preparedness or otherwise to face the disruptions associated with the coronavirus. So the top challenges that they have reported as captured in the online survey administered by AAU on the coronavirus include one, no preparedness for online courses. Two, the digital divide that is affecting students living in unconnected and rural areas. Three, broadband infrastructure challenges. Four, lack of e-learning platforms. And finally, handling large numbers of students online. Some of the interventions undertaken include one, issuing guidelines on adopting online and virtual education. Two, providing information on available resources for virtual education. Three, organizing virtual seminars for members to help them build capacity for virtual education. Three, collaborating with regional and national research and education networks to help ex extend affordable bandwidth to African higher education institutions. Providing a pool of experts to help individual institutions to transition to online education platforms negotiating with software vendors to provide affordable software to our member institutions, and finally providing free software to members who have serious budgetary constraints. Furthermore, a consortium consisting of AAU, Ubuntu Net Alliance, West and Central Africa Research and Education Networks, WACREN, Arab States Research and Education Networks, ASREN, and the National Research and Education Networks in Africa met virtually and subsequently issued a communique on April 6, 2020, calling for investments to support the development and strengthening of campus networks and research and education networks infrastructure and a provision of online remote teaching and learning platforms for African higher education. The 
consortium was of the opinion that this is the opportune time for all of us to come together to support African higher education, to keep their doors of learning, teaching, and research open. And therefore, they appeal to African governments, development partners, and other stakeholders to support campus networks and strengthen national research and education networks so that African institutions can effectively provide all types of digital services for remote teaching. Subsequently, these partners have written a concept paper as a result of the COVID-19 requesting for uptake in digital transformation, networking infrastructures, and advanced services. The concept paper has been submitted to various development partners for possible support. Also, AAU has entered into partnership with ELEN Africa and Wiley companies to quickly support African universities to migrate their teaching and learning activities online. This partnership among the AAU, ELEN Africa and Wiley aims to respond to the challenges that AAU member universities have reported in coping with the COVID-19 disruptions. The partnership is a quick response to support African universities so that they do not lose time in terms of their current academic calendar commitments. Ladies and gentlemen, on Tuesday, 14th April 2020, AEU organized a webinar for all vice chancellors, presidents, and rectors of African universities entitled Vice Chancellor's Dialogue Keeping African Universities Learning Doors Open. During the meeting, case studies and practical lessons on how institutions are handling the disruptions caused by the virus from important universities were presented, including Ashes University of Ghana, Hewa University of Egypt, and International University of Grand Bassam. They presented how they are coping with the current, uh, I mean, with the current situation in the midst of the crisis we are grappling with. Subsequently, AA has been supporting African universities with a view to moving their teaching, learning, and research activities online. A similar webinar is currently being planned for the CEOs of national regulatory agencies of higher education institutions on Thursday, which is tomorrow, tomorrow's week, on the theme response, sorry, to, today's week, response of African education regulatory bodies to COVID-19 pandemic, opportunities and challenges, and AA is inviting everybody to attend. The goal is to share information on how regulatory agencies are supporting higher education institutions in coping with their teaching, learning, and uh, engage, uh, 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 research engagement during the virus crisis. The virtual meeting will further offer an opportunity to discuss best practices on how universities are offering uninterrupted educational services to their students by distance learning in order not to disrupt their academic calendars as a result of the, uh, uh, the coronavirus and its related lockdowns. A solidarity message in key official languages of African Union as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic has been sent to all higher educational stakeholders from the Office of the Secretary General. While our regional offices have been organizing training sessions on tools for remote teaching and learning as a, resp as a, res as a result of the COVID-19 disruptions. So AAU have been involved in a number of these initiatives with a view to supporting our stakeholders to keep their doors of learning and teaching open in the midst of this crisis. And we are hoping to scale up our efforts to ensure that our university calendars are largely uninterrupted as a result of the crisis we are grappling with. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Jonathan, for uh, your message. And uh, please extend our quick recovery to uh, the Secretary General again. Uh, thank you for having reminded uh, us uh, uh, the weaknesses of the African universities and uh, also the solution put in place by uh, different universities to face uh, the, the COVID challenge. I also uh, noted your prospective view on future actions that uh, should be uh, implemented or envisaged. And uh, in that context, you shared uh, 
some opportunities that are avail available, such as the consortium, and also different partnerships that you mentioned and that uh, uh, people can tap in. And uh, thank you also for uh, closing by uh, sharing the information on the different webinar that uh, the African Association of Universities uh, is intending to to to, um, to conduct and uh, to, to which all of us can attend. Thank you very much for uh, your intervention. Um, Madam Edigi and uh, dear colleague, it's now my uh, pleasure to invite uh, a person that uh, is well known in uh, the context of uh, African Union uh, and uh, in Africa uh, for his different works, etc., and his different inter interventions that are very highly appreciated. Uh, that has also accepted to be kindly uh, part of us this morning and uh, to address a keynote to us. So it's my pleasure now to invite uh, Dr. Mahama Widraugo, uh, who is the Director of Human Resources, Science and Technology uh, of uh, the African Union Commission. So uh, Dr. Widraugo, you have the floor, please. Thank, <clears throat> thank you, um, moderator. Um, uh, excuse me, doctor. Uh, we will appreciate, I forgot to say the same to Jonathan. We will appreciate if you could activate your camera, your camera, please. If you don't mind. Okay, it was activated. I, uh, is it okay now? Uh, we cannot see you. I don't know if my techni technicians can see you, our colleagues from uh, the technical aspect. Can you see him? I cannot. Pressy. Because uh, the camera is on. Okay. Anyway, let's go. Let's go. Uh -oh. Let him continue. Continue. Maybe it will take some time to before it come up. Go ahead, please. Okay. okay. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> I want to really take this opportunity to, to thank uh, UNESCO for organizing uh, this uh, webinar, important webinar, and uh, of course inviting uh, the African Union Commission to deliver a, an address. I want to acknowledge the, the ADG, uh, UNESCO for Education, the Director UNESCO, uh, the regional, uh, for the regional office, uh, Nairobi, who with whom we are working very well, and all the distinguished participants to, to this webinar. I want again to really express our gratitude at the level of the Commission for the action undertaken to ensure mitigation of the pandemic. Mr. Wedraogo, on ne vous entend plus. Mr. Wedraogo? Bon. C'est bon maintenant? Oui, ça va. Allez-y, okay. on vous entend. OK, OK, good. So, I was, I was saying that education is a prerequisite for achieving Agenda 2063, the Africa we want, which is an integrated, prosperous, and peaceful Africa, an Africa which is globally competitive and contribute its fair share in the global arena. The head of states and government adopted the Continental Education Strategy for Africa, has a blueprint for the development of education in Africa, as well as the African domestication of the SDG4 and the Global Education 2030. The strategy provides the framework for reorienting Africa's education and training systems to meet the required knowledge, skills, and creativity for achieving Agenda 2063 aspiration and the sustainable development goal. Um, well, we can ask ourselves what are the challenges facing the African uh, education, particularly 
the African uh, uh, tertiary uh, education. Allow me to cite just a few because my predecessor have already mentioned quite a number of them. As depicted in, uh, in Caesar, reorienting enrollment, postgraduate education, research and innovation linked to economic, social and industrial development remain topical challenges facing the tertiary education sector. The capacity to absorb the massive number of graduates coming from the secondary education system, which we can attribute to the success of the education for all, necessitates building additional modern infrastructure in quantity and providing innovative training methodology using ICTs and online courses. So this is not always achieved in many of African countries. The mounting cost of tertiary education is also a key challenge and continental and sub-regional integration schemes, for example, harmonization, combined with private sector involvement, hold a key to expanding access and promoting relevance and advancing quality in the higher education. And of course, there is the question of Tibet, the very expensive training facilities that are involved with it, and the need to make Tibet coherent. So that it's, it can meet the demand of economic development of the continent in terms of quality skilled human resources and sufficient enough to support the need of human activity for the collective social well being. Clearly, I don't want to repeat it, but all the continental flagship project whether it is the continental free trade area, the issue of ensuring that we have the right uh, medication, medicine, therapeutic vaccine to address the pandemic are clearly linked to our ability to develop quality human capital. And that sometimes also rests squarely on our education system. And of course, the tertiary plays a fundamental role. To address some of these challenges, of course, many policy recommendations were made and implemented. We wish it could have been a lot more with a lot more implementation. But to cite a few, the Pan-African University, member state felt we need that one. We brought it in 2012, it was launched then. And of course, it's contributing to uh, improving the pool of graduate graduate uh, students uh, within the continent. Recently also, we have launched the Pan-African Virtual and E-University, uh, launched in 2019, just last December, has the online and distant arm of the Pan-African University. Some of the policy measures also include those that are taken to revitalize and expand tertiary education, research and innovation to address continental challenges and promote global competitiveness. This can be achieved by ensuring that we invest in the sector and create the conducive environment for research and innovation through the post provision of adequate infrastructure and resources. Expanding Tibet opportunities at both secondary and also tertiary level and strengthen linkage between the world of work and education and training system, undertake to harness the capacity of ICT to improve access, quality, and management of education and training system, and of course, consolidate and expand centers of excellence and enhance institutional linkages in the continent Since the declaration by the WHO of the, the outbreak 
of the pandemic caused by coronavirus. Many member states have implemented measures in public health policies and strategies, such as the total lockdown, quarantine, social distancing, infection control and containment, clear and transparent communication, as well as complementary multi-sector response actions. Most of the universities close campuses and send the student home. That happened here in Africa and also abroad. In fact, uh, my daughters were sent packing out of the dormitories and many African countries also were a voicing concern about the repatriation of the students abroad, like in China. So, where possible, universities shifted to distance education in its various forms to allow classes to continue and students to complete their studies. Of course, this is not happening everywhere, as the digital gap and limited preparedness including lack of resources has left have left many universities across Africa stranded. The African ministers of science, technology and innovation brought the African education and science and technology response to the COVID-19 pandemic by adopting guidelines to ensure continuous schooling and learning online and offline. They also undertook into planning for reopening schools with appropriate strategy to catch up on the lost period of learning and implement back to school campaign and other measures to curb infection in schools and educational institutions. And finally, they felt important to document their experiences for mutual learning and scaling up of good practices. The, the ministers also emphasized on the need to prioritize investment in internet infrastructure and facilitate broadband connectivity coverage to all education institutions school, universities, and colleges, particularly those in the rural area and remote learning and teaching platforms and tools through digital technology and traditional media, such as radio and television, and advocate for access to free data for a period and education content available through telecom companies and other digital service providers, such as search engines. So from the minister's standpoint, Connecting Africa's universities, skills training institutions and secondary schools with broadband and internet is essential if the continent is to realize the potential of digital technology in education. Further, all the young people need to acquire digital skills at the basic and intermediate level if they are to use technology the integration of the digital skill training into the core curriculum of formal education courses for all learners, irrespective of their specialization, is therefore essential. The Global Education Coalition is therefore a welcome initiative to support the member state to respond to the COVID-19 pandemic. And we can we surely applaud UNESCO for, for this initiative with all the partners. And of course, it is in line with the setting up of a coalition of all education stakeholders to facilitate and support and support the initiative arising from the implementation of the continental education strategy for Africa. Well, all what I've said and including what previous speakers have said show that online and distance learning may well be the new norm for higher education, despite the criticism from 
certain stakeholders who believe that it might exacerbate the divide among the have and have not. The African Union in, in the last February 2020 adopted the digital transformation strategy for Africa. And this particular strategy really seeks to harness digital technologies and innovation to transform African societies and economies to promote Africa's integration, generate inclusive economic growth, stimulate job creation, break the div digital divide, and eradicate poverty for the continent's socioeconomic development, and ensure Africa's ownership of modern tools in of digital management. Talking about going online at the level of the African Union, we have already mentioned that we launched the Pan-African Virtual E-University. It launched uh, online courses in cloud and virtualization concepts and media and, and information liter literacy. And it was done also in collaboration with UNESCO. And it's planning further to launch, launch new courses in entrepreneurship for development and skills for employability in collaboration with the African Virtual University. <clears throat> but let's face it, we still face challenges. And I don't want to extend too much on it, but of course, the connectivity, the African connectivity problem remain there. Uh, the numbers that are showing are quite The, hear you. Mr. Wadraogo? Mr. Wadraogo, can you hear me? I, we cannot hear you. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Mm. For for some reason, my mic uh, decided to switch the sensor off. <laughs> I'm sorry okay. about that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I was mentioning some of the challenges we are facing. And the statistics are uh, quite daunting. Um, the need to ensure that we have broadband uh, and internet connectivity. Uh, the need also to equip the teacher with the knowledge, skills, and confidence to use technology to improve their own professional competence and the learning of the student. You cannot just say, uh, tell a teacher who has never done this to just go out and do it. He may not be, he may not have all the confidence. If technology is to change teaching, teachers must also actively espouse it. Without addressing these factors in a concerted manner, the spread of technology in education will encounter insurmountable barriers. And the minister were very, very clear because they think uh, it's only united that we can address these things, how we can address training in a coordinated, um, way so that most African countries can benefit. I will not dwell too much on the issue of faculty, student. I think the presentation of uh, our colleague from the Association of African University was quite impressive in that regard. We have also realized that uh, uh, recently uh, the online industry is basically um, approaching nearly every stakeholders, teachers, policymaker, et cetera, on different mod training module and other product that they might have to be able to assist in this online and distance learning. So while it is a good development, we need also to ensure that we are getting, we are making the right choices 
that could really uh, contribute into resolving the challenges we are facing. So there are many solutions, stronger language between university and research education network, the training of lecturers, and of course, the need to appropriately support the education stakeholder to address the, <clears throat> the cost and accessibility of, of internet. And to that effect, <clears throat> the, the commission is working with the African Development Bank to ensure that the, the, the African Education, Science, Technology and Innovation Fund is operationalized as soon as possible. So there are challenges, there are opportunities, but I think that the, 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 the tragedy of COVID-19 pandemic will remain one if we are not able to capitalize on this opportunity, which means to really transform these challenges into opportunities for the development of the education sector in, in Africa. I thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Wedraogo. We were not uh, expecting less from you, knowing you. We are really happy that uh, you have been able to be with us, and above all, the relevant and very inspiring message that uh, really captured all the challenges, solutions, and uh, sets the scene for us for a successful meeting. Thank you very much for, 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 for your intervention. I would like now to give the floor uh, to, we have invited three countries to make, uh, just to share the country experience. Uh, we gave them initially three, five minutes. I just want to invite them. They are all very high level professors. I'm sure they can make it in three minutes instead of five before, because we're a bit late with time. So can, uh, professors, if you can just summarize your main idea in three minutes, and you will have the opportunity to come back uh, to develop more in the course of the discussions. So please bear with us. I now have the pleasure to give the, play, the, the floor to uh, Professor Belay Kassa, Director of uh, Pan-African Virtual University, uh, uh, an e-university preview on strategies and perspective for anticipating crises related to online learning. So Professor, you have uh, just to summarize in a few minutes, uh, three minutes, your idea. Thank you very much. The Thank you. you. Can you, Thank please, you. Can you please activate your video? We'll be no, I have a problem with my camera. Okay, don't worry. Go ahead, please. Okay. Uh, my, my task was made simple by uh, Dr. Udrago, who is my boss, who also talked a, a little bit about on Pan-African University and uh, on virtual university. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for uh, organizing this webinar on such uh, a timely issue and also for inviting us to give uh, or to share our experience. So the Pan-African Virtual and the University as stated out by Dr. Udrago is one of the 14 flagship programs of the African Union. It is the continent's response to SDG4 and the uh, part and parcel of the continental education strategy on Africa. Uh, PAVU or the virtual university was launched on the 20th of December 2019 and it started its programs on the 15th of January 2020. PAVU is the open distance and e-learning arm of the Pan-African University. Uh, as you know, the Pan-African University is uh, the University of the African Union. It has uh, five institutes spread across the five geographic zones of the continent. Uh, Cameroon uh, hosts the Social Science Hub, Algeria, the Water and Energy, South Africa, Space Science, uh, Kenya, Basic Science, Technology and Innovation, Nigeria, Life and Earth Sciences. The rectorate of the university is located in Cameroon. So the virtual university, uh, which is affiliated or embedded in the Pan-African University, has the objective of creating access to tertiary and continuing education in Africa 
by capitalizing on digital revolution. It has also uh, the objective of reaching out to large number of students and professionals in multiple sites simultaneously and anywhere, anytime. So, uh, Dr. Udrago talked about the uh, ICT and uh, how it can help uh, reach out to large uh, audience. Uh, what have we done since the outbreak of the pandemic? You know, the Pan-African University Institutes have closed because they had to adhere to the directives issued by the host governments and have suspended their teaching and learning activities. So what we did was we resorted to alternative modes of delivery to engage the impacted students through all means available. Uh, here is where PAVU platforms have been extremely important to ensure continuity of learning. Then, uh, what we figured out was after the closure, we figured out that we're not prepared for this new phenomenon. Nobody saw it coming. And then we, we had to really improvise. Uh, make sure that we ensure continuity of learning by using the Pan-African virtual and university platforms and all the institutes are now offering the programs using the virtual university platform. But then what we figured out was that the academic staff and some of the students were not prepared at all. And uh, at times uh, students didn't have their own, uh, you know, uh, computers, iPads, Instructors uh, were not used to online teaching and uh, we, ha we had to really uh, uh, bring them on board uh, at times uh, trying to build their capacity. Uh, then what uh, lesson we have uh, drawn from uh, this pandemic is we are in the process of commissioning a study to address effectively this and other similar challenges in a more structured, systemic, and cost-effective way. Uh, towards that end, we're working with uh, different partners. Uh, we're we're uh, having serious discussions with regional research and education networks. Uh, we have partners like uh, the African Development Bank, uh, the European Union and uh, GIZ uh, who are also uh, willing to support in our uh, endeavor to roll out ICT related technologies to the Pan-African University uh, Institutes as well as to the virtual university. So the, the Pan-African Virtual University is a young can institution. You, can you conclude please? I'm, I'm winding up, I'm winding up. The virtual university is a young institution. It's uh, a project in the making. But all the same, through the process, we're able to learn that to learn that we need to do a lot more to make it effective and operational. I thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, dear colleague, for uh, uh, your, your 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 message. Let me go quickly to Cote d'Ivoire for three minutes. Me, Professor Tiemoko Kone, you have three minutes, please, for to share your ideas. Activate your camera if you, if possible. Professor Tiemoko, uh, Professor Kone, you have the floor, please. Okay. Good morning. I'm Clement Lobo from Cote d'Ivoire. And on behalf of Professor Kone Chemoma, who is, uh, is, not, uh, is not available at that very moment, and we are sorry for, um, for this absence, I'm going to present the Ivorian answer of Virtual University of Cote d'Ivoire. Okay, against. You have three COVID. minutes, please. No problem, Mr. Okay. Ido. Okay. So, what are we doing since this COVID is there? COVID-19 has started. So, uh, next slide, please. Okay. Uh, let's run quickly as for the problematic. Let's go for the next slide, please. Uh, 
Yeah. I said no sight. Okay. So in Africa, since these diseases have started, people have changed the behaviors. You can see everywhere people with a mask on the nose, on the face, or people washing their hands everywhere. Next slide, please. And uh, our request is facing the challenges. More than 156 people are not going to, 1,000 students are not going to school since it has started. They cannot move across the country. So we are not facing that challenges. And about 7 million of students in the primary school, secondary school also are not going to school. So there's a risk that we go for a validation of the years. Since school has been closed for 60 days, so we are facing, we are, far, we are concerned about this, this very one. Next slide, please. And since it has started in Agricoles, you can see at the left side, we have one map. All the universities, the high education universities here have been closed. They are the biggest of the country. At the right side, you can see Agricoles Virtual University is still working. How and why is it working? Our secret is just that we are working on with open distance learning that we are using. Okay, next slide, please. So how are we going to teach these people, the five, the seven million home-bound students, how are we going to develop the access of open educational resources or institutions who are doing face-to-face -face teaching and what is, what is going to be the new roles of the teachers in this distance education? How are we going to ensure pedagog pedagogical continuity? Our solution, our proposition is, next slide please. Next, again. Students in these new ways are far, uh, they, they, they are always connected with online. So our own is to use techno-pedagogy to link, to connect students and lecturer. So the student will use a platform where, where he's going to teach and the student can access the knowledge by using any devices. So we use the bring your own device method, uh, approach. So students bring the smartphone, they bring the, the tablet, they bring the, the personal com uh, computer and they can learn in autonomy and they can interact with the teacher. That is how we have been able to overcome these challenges. And we were doing it before the disease has started. So we think that if students, if schools go in these directions, they can move forward. Next, please. And this techno-pedagogical pedagogy as a royal road for we, we think that this is the design. When a student, when a school or any institution approach come to us, we let them know that we have to set educational infrastructure, which is platform, network, uh, architecture, and they also have to train the actors, okay, so that those actors can help handling. So the usage of also OER, okay, open educational resources, open distance learning and MOOCs also is a way for us to overcome these challenges. So people, they should not always consume and let's say take advantage of the MOOC. They can also be sensitized to it. And at the end of the process, they should also be able to produce MOOC, to produce open distance learning or open educational resources. Next slide, please. One minute more. One minute more, please. Okay, next slide, please. Continue to talk with your slides if they are not uh, moving quickly. Continue to. Okay. So we have been able also to open the library, the virtual library for, for, for students since the crisis has started. So universities can access these uh, free open educational resources from anywhere without being registered. 
Also, we have the MOOCs, the platform that we use to show the students how they can access to it. Next, next slide, please. This is the name of the platform. If one MOOC or MOOC UBCI in UDCI. Next, please. So MOOCs have been shown, have been opened for students to get access to it free. And we also have an implementation national plan of technopedagogy in higher education. So platform, we provide platform, educational platform for national education and also pedagogical platform for academical institution. So we offer consultancies for universities. We offer consultancy for organizations for business organization for them to know that we have the expertise. That's how we need to do the transformation. So this is the link of the of the SSS secondary senior school platform where students can prepare the back. Okay, and BPC the GSS. Next one, please, for the primary one. And next again, please, where the student also have opportunity to see all this one. We provide platform for for government institutions also. Next one, please. And uh, we have a training of trainers in technopedagogy where we gather our IT staff, we train them. Next one. Also, we have a we have a training of trainers, teachers of teachers. We train our teachers. Though they have been trained in already in it, but we train them again. We train also the, the tutors for them to know better how to share the knowledge of distant learning. And uh, we have. Can you conclude, those... please? Clement, can you conclude, please? Okay, let's go quickly to the end. So we communicate in our good on our good practice for people to know how we can promote all those ones. And we think that by sharing this knowledge, by reactivating the network, distance learning, internationally and also locally, we are able to show people that distance learning is also a good practice for them to implement, to do the blended learning for university wise, all those ones. So as I'm talking to you, I'm also running another uh, webinar in, to teach all the learning uh, actors in Ivory Coast. So I think that if, if, this, if this one is done, we are sure that people can overcome this one by digitalizing Merci. all the education system. Thank you. Sir. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup, Clément. Uh, uh, we agreed that there will be no PowerPoint presentation, and my colleagues uh, should not put PowerPoint presentation on the on the board. Uh, we it was one of the guidelines so that uh, we can share the PowerPoint later, but uh, just give the floor to people to say words about uh, their presentation. Can I now go to our Kenyan colleague for three minutes, Mr. Mwanda Ntarangui, uh, can you uh, see your commission uh, for university education, Nairobi? Uh, you have three minutes, uh, brother, to share with us your ideas. Please go ahead. Activate your camera if possible. Thank you very much. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, properly. We can hear you loud and clear. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, the Commission for University Education is the oldest uh, state-sanctioned uh, organization that does its work, uh, having started in 1985. But uh, this disruption has uh, challenged uh, many of our universities that were already struggling uh, because the, the universities expanded very fast and the state is not able to support all of them adequately. So Corona has uh, brought a double disruption to us. But there have been some uh, uh, responses because we can't just sit on our hands. And we've seen that uh, institutions have uh, taken time to rethink the way they deliver their, their curriculum. They have uh, uh, taken time because most of them were finishing up uh, the, their semester and they were caught up in about two or three weeks before they finish. And this was uh, something that they had wanted to do and finish and exams were not done as yet. So that led them to think uh, quickly. So a number of them went into what we call uh, emergency remote learning modes, 
where they delivered content in uh, whatever ways they could, including uh, sending um, content to students through WhatsApp, uh, email, any other forms so that they could finish uh, the, their, their semester. There has also uh, been an opportunity where the institutions that had uh, the capacity to teach uh, online uh, were also uh, starting to reactivate and a new interest among its faculty uh, started. There was also uh, an area in which uh, students uh, were uh, reached and uh, some of their needs met. We know uh, two of our universities uh, did uh, provide uh, virtual graduation uh, so that students could graduate and uh, get, enter into the, into the market. And we've learned some lessons in this process. One is the centrality of the nation state. We may be uh, razzle-dazzled by global uh, uh, interests, but when the state provides the infrastructure, it allows for local problems to be handled. And that is something that we need uh, to emphasize. Again, we are looking at uh, quality assurance uh, beyond uh, what we call compliance to looking at student experience. How are students being met? How are students' uh, needs being met? Are they accessing uh, these uh, uh, new learning modes? What is their capacities? What are their abilities? And some indications are that some of the students that were actually not engaging in conversations uh, during the face-to-face -face classes are now finding their voices. So there are some things that we can say uh, are showing up in this. We also are uh, seeing that the faculty are the most critical uh, part of any university. Without them, this online uh, learning will not take place as it should be. So again, there is need to uh, emphasize uh, well-trained faculty who are followed, followed with uh, support, be it uh, in the infrastructure, but also capacity building. And also, we want to uh, see that uh, in, in the next uh, part of it, because we may have COVID here for a while, uh, how are these lessons that we are learning going to translate into something that will help us uh, offer a, a education line? For us as a commission, we are encouraging universities to document what uh, they are going to be doing uh, so that they can learn from it. This is something that no one had a, blu a blueprint for, and it's important that they record and note what they are doing. Finally, uh, some of the uh, things we're thinking in terms of it is to reflect this COVID has allowed us to reflect on what kinds of in infrastructure is needed to deliver content. Can we, we cannot we cannot hear you anymore. Uh, dear colleague, I don't know, your mic has cut. We cannot hear you anymore, but uh, I could uh, note that you were going toward the conclusion of your your message. Uh, you will share with us uh, later uh, the written uh, message that uh, you have so that we can put it in the report. So um, since our colleague has some uh, connection problem, Mr. Mwenda from Nairobi, uh, I will. Uh, this is this was the last presentation on the country uh, experience. I'm now going to give uh, uh, the floor to Antares, the regional director for UNESCO regional director for Eastern Africa, for the uh, um, following action question and uh, answers, and above all, the interventions of our partners, the members of the global coalition who are have kindly accepted to be with us and also for the closing remarks. So, Aunt Therese, thank you very much. Can you please uh, activate your camera and uh, take over the mic for the rest of the uh, meeting, please? Aunt Therese. Thank you very much, uh, Ido. Um, thank you to all the speakers, uh, especially um, to the ADG, um, uh, to Aruna from uh, the UN, uh, um, coordination. Um, I also want to thank all of those who've spoken from the our keynote speaker in particular, um, from the uh, Association of the Universities. What I want to, um, given the fact that we have taken so much time, um, probably we would just ask um, for three interventions, just three interventions, and then um, we bring in our partners. 
because um, as you have rightly said, Ido, this is about looking for solutions. Um, we know that uh, there's a lot of interesting work going on, um, but we still know that there are gaps. We are aware that um, our promise to leave no one behind is very much seriously um, compromised. And therefore, we cannot um, in any way, no matter how good we think we are, we are faring, we need to begin to look at what are the gaps. And so first, let me allow three questions if they are burning. <clears throat> and uh, we can just indicate on the, on the chat if you want to say something. Um, please, we will keep it very short. I see my colleague from UNEP who's already asked uh, to take the floor. Um, do we have any other question? Uh, let me allow Juliet to, to come in and then um, we continue. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Th thank you very much, uh, Anne Therese, and uh, good morning, good afternoon, to everyone. My name is Juliet Biao. I'm the U uh, director and the regional representative at the United Nations Environment Program, and I'm based in Ni in Nairobi, Kenya. Uh, I have uh, really two ve two very uh, 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 small uh, points. The first one uh, has been uh, partly covered by my sister uh, Aruna. Uh, it is about uh, really um, looking at uh, how universities can really play uh, the, uh, a role of fostering entrepreneurship uh, beyond uh, just uh, um, pro pro uh, producing uh, knowledge. And uh, this is uh, really uh, looking at uh, the linkages between knowledge production and the labor market opportunity, especially in this context of COVID-19. And before COVID-19, uh, we, 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 we all know that we, we are in a very competitive uh, world. So uh, how can universities produce the knowledge, uh, enhance the skills, for those who really uh, have the chance to reach uh, the higher education to drive uh, the many young people in Africa who are still in the informal sector. We all know that Africa is a very youthful continent. So this is uh, one thing that I will I would like to highlight and that will also help us to to tap into the innovate in innovative innovations that are going on. Last point. And uh, the quick one is environmental education. How do we incorporate uh, education, uh, environment, uh, environmental dimension in education so that we can really uh, implement effectively the, the sustainable development goals? We know that COVID-19 offers an excellent opportunity to ensure that the essential task to build a secure and sustainable future uh, 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 so we need to tap into this uh, opportunity now through uh, through education. Thank you. Thank you very much. I also um, uh, there is a question um, that has been posed, but I believe um, we also have um, uh, Professor Maforo from Zimbabwe University who also wants to make a contribution. Keep it very short. Meanwhile, there is a question about the cost. So as you respond, maybe you can also give us um, uh, your views about that. Yes, Professor Maforo from Zimbabwe. Hello, uh, uh, thank you. I'm not a professor yet, but uh, my contribution was, is on uh, the sustainable costs of e-learning. Uh, most of us were uh, primarily looking at synchronous approaches, which uh, which are video conferencing, uh, chats, and all these, but they impose high cost on institutions. So our experience at the, Zimbabwe, at the Zimbabwe Open University was to migrate from synchronous activities to asynchronous ones, which do not require students to be online at the same time, because students have various affordances. Some may have internet access, two or three times a week. Some may have internet, internet access the whole week.
we go on to Professor Akin Solu Abiodun. Also, very brief, just keep it brief. I, I picked up the point you've made, and it's a valid point. We should really look at it, the cost aspect of it. Yes, Professor Akin Solu. Thank you, Ma, and thank you to UNESCO for this. I just want to put a question across to the Ivorian experience on this techno pedagogy. I can see a lecturer and a student being autonomous using these electronic devices. What of if the course outline entails a graphical illustration? How do they go about this? I just want to know how they address some of all this in this techno pedagogy. And that is one for now, but I still have some solutions from my own and to share with the audience if later I'm permitted. Ma, thank you. OK, thank you very much. It, it looks like your question may not be answered because um, uh, the prof, uh, the, the, the presenter has left the meeting. Ah! <laughs> oh, you are there? OK, OK. Uh, so can you re respond? I think yours is a direct one. Um, yes. And um, the other is linked to the course. Uh, so go ahead very quickly from uh, Casa. I've read. I've read. Okay. Please, the question we were asking was how do we address about the issue of uh, techno pedagogy, isn't it? The graphical illustrations to students using techno pedagogy. The graphic illustrations, uh, how, I don't get you why. Okay, um, Prof, can you just repeat your question for him? Prof, please unmute your microphone. Unmute your microphone and repeat okay. the question. Okay, the question is, I want to know how they address any courses that has a lot of graphical illustration oh, to okay. students okay. during presentation. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay, I get you right. Okay, we are we are using like software that are open source, open source software that enable us to integrate, to insert some graphic illustrations, and uh, we also use uh, those uh, uh, those software like. Uh, uh, Google Google Meet, okay. Google Drive has a lot of is offering a lot of uh, opportunity for our students to to you to do to collaborate on the same document. So as for the illustration, we use open source. Let's let's use the model. For instance, model give us opportunity to integrate a lot of formats, a lot of type. Of document, what is video, what is audio, what is what there is uh, also uh, images. So we have variety of the, of opportunity that we can use by using the. Right. This. Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, the way we are going, we really need to have some mixed solutions. It's not everything that should be internet. We can also look at offline, intranet, because if you continue with the internet, we, we are going to fail our promise to make sure that everyone is uh, would be able to access. So let's not Absolutely. pretend that we can access everybody. At this point Absolutely. in time for UNEP, I believe uh, in the chat, we've got our colleague from Southern Africa who has provided um, uh, what uh, they're doing there. And so probably we can um, uh, allow that to go, but it's very pertinent uh, when we look at our offering, should it really take care of the response of the, of the, of the, of the needs of, 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 the, of development, be it social, be it economical, be it um, environmental. So I think there's a lot of challenge we have to address. Um, I see um, Dr. Sisto from Juba University wants to make a very quick intervention. I was going to close this Q&A to allow the partners, but let's just listen to um, our youngest republic, somebody coming from our youngest republics, Dr. Sisto. Is Dr. Sisto there? 
No. Okay. Um, let's 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 really um, pause for a while. We may have uh, some time to ask further questions, but let's just listen to some of the private sector um, participants that are also uh, going to give us some very quick insight into some other solutions. And then after that, we can really open up a little before we close uh, the meeting. Um, at this point in time, I believe we have a list of them. Is Tao with us? Tao? No? Yes, I'm here. Yes, okay. I'm here. If, yeah, if Tao is with us, Tao normally manages the partnership of this strategy we have developed, and um, he's really helped us in mobilizing a lot of partners. Tao is from our International Institute for Technology in Moscow. Tao, do you want to really run through and manage um, the partners' interventions? Ah, oh, it's my turn. <laughs> yeah, just just That's just for you to introduce them very quickly. Yeah. Uh, okay, and uh, it's a pleasure for me uh, to participate in this uh, important webinar, and uh, I'm representing UNESCO Institute IITE in Moscow. We are talking about ICT solutions, and uh, this is a mandate of this institute to assist and support member states in the international community uh, for better use of this uh, technology in education. And uh, we are very uh, delighted and uh, very proud of being part of the uh, collective uh, action uh, in the continent. And we uh, join these actions, uh, not just by ourselves, but with uh, quite a number of uh, uh, partners from both the public and the private uh, sectors. So today we have a number of them uh, with us. Uh, may I first give the floor to uh, Huawei? Is me, Mr. Linto Wu online ready? So each of our partners we have at most five minutes, uh, like a brief uh, uh, introduction and the presentation. Can yeah. I just Send. interrupt to say, can they really okay. summarize it to three minutes? Because we are running short uh, three of Three minutes. Uh, okay. 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 okay, okay. Thank you. No problem. Yes, go ahead. Can you, can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Um, th th thanks, uh, Dr. Zhao, and uh, 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 thank you, uh, Anna Therese, and also Ido. Uh, very pleasure to rep represent Huawei here. And um, uh, I have uh, met you much more often than, than, than ever before. I, I too really take thanks for the, uh, to this opportunity to you know get get uh, know to much more big audience. Um, my name is Linto Wu. I'm uh, responsible for the education partnership in, in Huawei. Um, you know, Huawei is an ICT solution provider and also smart device provider. Uh, we are to bring connections to 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 every corners of the world. So, um, uh, we, in, particularly in Africa, we really have as a big challenge. We work very closely with our our carrier partners. We try to to you know bring all these in, infrastructures. Uh, besides that, we also have a like a digi chuck um, program which is re uh, movable. I think we, we're going to do this more often as well. Uh, for my part, is mainly on the higher education part. Um, uh, we, we during the pandemic, we uh, that also have uh, you know uh, impact a huge number of our partner universities. Uh, we have here more than uh, three hundred five. Uh, 50, 100 uh, Huawei Asset Academy uh, partners in Africa. And we have launched a learn on programs. So to, uh, to, 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 to help the students and teachers to continue their learning uh, online. Um, we, we provide them with the, the platform. We also, you know, for, for some students who, which have difficulty in the, in the connect connectivity, we also, uh, you know, cooperate with our carrier partner to provide them with additional data cards. So that's that's now happening. And um, uh, at the moment, there are more than 4,000 students has been uh, engaged. And uh, we we also have a, 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 a quite big number of, of teachers have, has been also been newly trained uh, via online uh, forms. Um, 
also uh, last but not least, I think um, uh, the very important part is that we we have we, we need to have a uh, rich resource of online online education resource. That is, um, at the moment we have uh, make uh, open up uh, more than one hundred and thirty uh, MOOC courses on our platform. Uh, we 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 open that to everyone, and also everyone is also welcome to continue to develop uh, further you know uh, versions on on this uh, course. So we call for for a localization of this kind of uh, materials. Um, so by by end of the year, we target to have uh, you know more uh, more than two hundred courses on online. Uh, finally, I, I really like to, to to thank this opportunity, and I also like to call for more partners to join. Especially, uh, I have heard the uh, the virtual, you know, Pan African Virtual University, also the Association of African Universities. We really welcome more university to join our program to, uh, to to you know to empower more African youth with the uh, ICT uh, digital skills. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Wu, for your passion and uh, your effort in mobilizing the resources for the continent. And Huawei is a member of the uh, Global Coalition of UNESCO. Now it's my honor to invite another member of uh, UNESCO Glo Global Coalition, the representative from Microsoft. Hello? Microsoft ready online? No. So let's uh, quickly move to another uh, partner uh, that is uh, the UNESCO Category 2 Center in Shenzhen, China. It is the International Center for Higher Education Innovation. Ms. Han, Professor Han, the floor is yours. The screen is yours. Please. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Madam Ayan, Mr. Yaido, uh, for the organization of this meeting. We are talking a lot about higher education continuity in Africa, and the organization of the meeting is also kind of continuity of what has been discussed previously between UNESCO, I, uh, organized yeah. by UNESCO IIT, UNESCO Regional Office in Eastern Africa. So to put what what has been discussed it what has been discussed implemented in uh, and put into action so uh like uh, many participants and especially adgs has talked about challenges faced by higher education in, in africa like uh, lack of capacity to study online and out of school and teachers lack of capacity uh for teaching online and higher education institutions lack of online courses and higher education institutions lack of appropriate infrastructure and hardware facilities for online and distant teaching and learning. So what could we do as a UNESCO uh, Category 2 Center? So IT's response is to uh, provide solutions to help our higher education institutions in Africa to cope with this crisis, uh, to cope with this crisis. So I, uh, IHE put forward or launched IIOE, International Institute of Online Education, in, uh, to higher education institutions in Africa in April this year. So IIOE provides an ideal technological solution for the success, uh, sex, successful implementation of online and blended teaching and learning in, in Africa. And its mission is to enhance the capacity of higher education institutions in Africa and Asia Pacific and especially the teachers for ICT enabled and enhanced teaching, so as to increase the students' access to quality higher education. So first, IOE provides professional development opportunities to higher education teachers to improve the ICT in education competencies. And the training IOE provide is competency-based, and the competency is ICT in education competencies. And the training consists of assessment, online assessment, online cross study, and practice to support uh, teachers' professional development. And the provision of this IOE training are based on IIOE competency framework of higher education teachers. And this framework summarizes the competencies that are most needed by higher education teachers in the digital age to teach. 
so which uh, include competencies for online and blended teaching and learning, competencies for ICT-enabled higher education administration and management, and competencies for emerging ICT in industries and in higher education. So One currently, minute, <laughs> currently IOE is organizing uh, a series of uh, uh, train, online trainings to cope with coronavirus pandemic, and they are uh, already, already about 1,000 higher education teachers for more than uh, 80 universities in more than 30 countries who had participated in these trainings. So second, IOE provide free and quality online courses uh, in ICT-related disciplines. And IOE not only provide free courses to IOE partner universities, it also helps our partner universities to make their own online courses by providing smart classroom. And this smart classroom is a, a collaborative uh, a project between UNESCO IG and our enter enterprise partner, Weidong Cloud Education Group. We donated the establishment of uh, seven smart classrooms in all IOE partner universities in Africa. And for example, in Ain Shams University in Egypt, the just, uh, the youth just completed- Please be brief, sorry, please be brief, yeah. Okay, so apart the, uh, Apart the hardware and uh, support, uh, IOE also provide uh, scientific evaluation and assessment, including institutional evaluation and the teacher's ICT competency assessment and uh, the assessment of uh, of ICT uh, uh, the, the assessment of teachers in ICT related disciplines to better guide them to conduct online and blended teaching and learning. And in this year, UNESCO IG is going to work with eight more universities in eight more countries in Africa to further extend our uh, IOE benefits to more countries in Africa. And for participants could refer to my PowerPoint that I already <laughs> shared with Mr. Yaido for detailed information. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Sorry for making you a bit nervous. And uh, we now, one of the webinars of uh, I, ICHIE is going on simultaneously with this webinar and thank you very much. We really appreciate your contribution and support uh, for the continent. And now we move to another member of uh, Global Coalition that is uh, uh, the Hanban Mohammed uh, Smart University in Dubai. Thank you very much, dear yes. Prof. Tao. Good afternoon, dear colleagues, your excellences. I will be very brief to respect the, the time limits we have. Hamdan bin Mohammed Smart University is the first uh, smart university accredited by the Ministry of Education of the United Arab Emirates. And uh, considering that we have this expertise in e-learning, for us as a university, it was quite uh, easy to go fully online when the, the situation unfolded. At the same time, as we consider it is our responsibility to share our practices and to assist our colleagues uh, from other universities, as well as school teachers, we held uh, several webinars for the universities here in the Arab region to share some of the uh, solutions and best practices in online learning. At the same time, we developed uh, free resources for teachers specifically designed to help them to move to remote learning in the context of emergency closures of schools and universities. So we developed two courses in free access for the educators uh, at different level of education uh, in cooperation with the Ministry of Education of the EE, as well as uh, in cooperation with the UNESCO ITE. Uh, uh, the courses are available in multiple languages. So the first one is called Be an Online Tutor in 24 Hours. It's a crash course that provides the necessary training to teaching uh, an academic personnel of various levels about online education processes. It is very uh, practical and the idea behind it is to equip teachers with all the necessary knowledge just to go and to teach online when it's necessary, because as, as we know, the, the teachers did not have any time to prepare for this closures and they have to deal with that without interrupting the process. So we cover all the available uh, tools and communication and creation tools to continue uh, learning in the online 
uh, environments. And this course is available in five uh, UN languages, English, Arabic, Russian, Spanish, and French. And the second course that is also already available in free access, it's called uh, Design an Online Course in 24 Hours. And it continues exploring on how to develop online classroom and to conduct online lessons. So we had a, a very successful experience here in, in the Arab region. And currently we have more than 119,000 teachers registered uh, from different regions. Actually, it's 81 uh, country total and different regions, including Russian speaking countries in CIS countries with the support of UNESCO ITE, but also the US, uh, America, and even Africa. But so far, it's individual teachers who uh, find this course. While we do believe that it can be beneficial for teachers uh, of different levels in Africa to, to support them in this time. So this is briefly our contribution. Thank yeah. you very yeah. much. Thank you very much, Ms. Elena, and I hope that more teachers in Af Africa will benefit from this crash course specially designed for the COVID. Now it's my uh, pleasure to invite uh, Ms. Lin, representing another private sector, uh, NetDragon, based in China. Yes. Ms. Lin, are you online? Hello, can you yes. hear Yes, we can hear Hello. you clearly. Go uh, ahead, three yeah. minutes, please. Thank you. So, um, Hello everyone, my name is Emma Lee. I'm from NetDragon. NetDragon is an education technology company. Um, as our, as our, um, uh, 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 as our observe, we find out that um, compared with the K-12 learners, higher education learners are more self-motivated and better accepting e-learning. Online education is not narrowed in the online teaching, letting teachers and students still feel like uh, in a school or in a classroom is very important. Hence, in this COVID-19 special period, we would like to introduce at the border platform to you guys. Teachers could use Edmodo to send messages, share class materials, assign tasks, and handling homework. Save teachers time by bringing all classroom tools in one. Edmodo also intend to help teachers, administrators, and parents to facilitate students' learning and provide social caring. So far, uh, Edmodo have more than 100 million members. Although our main users are K-12, Edmodo also could be used in higher education. For example, computer science is one of the most active communities and on the platform, and you also could join the discussion of vocational training and so on. Edmodo is designed to help organizations drive better outcome through education. So the platform includes the functions like secure communication hub, data analysis, announcement, and so on. For example, in March, uh, the Education Ministry of Egypt announced a model to be online learning platform for the nationwide K-12 education system in Egypt. Hence, Edmodo will provide service for over 22 million students in Egypt to continue course progress. Also, Edmodo collaborate with the Egypt's Knowledge Bank on the digital libraries to bring lots of digital content, include research journals and other exclusive education resources to their learners. One more minute, please. Okay, our strengths um, also exist in teacher community. It could help African higher education teachers to discuss topics with uh, other te teachers in US, Europe, China, and so on. So I will click. Um, the third strength is helping education administrators and organizations like a principal of a, of a university 
they um, could easily get teaching and learning data and build a school community where all stakeholders can equally stay and update uh, involved. So in the end, in the end, um, uh, now, Jagan also um, provide further education solution like in Egypt. Papa classroom is welcomed by the education ministry. We hope this kind of future uh, solution should could be used in Africa. So, um, thank, th thanks for your attention. So, uh, we welcome to contest and also or, or, although um, and model is also open and free for the schools and the teachers to register and free to use. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you very much, Ms. Lin, for the uh, introduction. Uh, I hope more countries in Africa could benefit and use uh, this wonderful platform. It's a nice package designed. Thank you very much. Now it's my pleasure to invite another member of uh, UNESCO uh, Global Coalition. It's the largest uh, MOOC provider, Coursera. Uh, Ms. Shat, are you online? Hi, thank you very much. Hi, everyone. Yeah. I hope you're yeah. well. Thank you very much for your insights so far. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Great. So as I mentioned by our colleague, uh, Mr. Tao Zhan, we are the largest education provider online. At the moment, we have 58 million users globally, uh, many of whom come from Africa. We work with over 3,000 global corporations to train their employees, and we work with over uh, 30 different governments globally to also train government officials and train citizens, especially youth, uh, for new skills for the fourth industrial revolution. Uh, this current pandemic goes to the very heart of Coursera's mandate. Our mandate is to provide quality education to anyone, anywhere, at the most accessible cost. Um, and by providing online training from the world's top universities, we have over 200 of the world's top universities that provide certificates when the learners complete. We have uh, 20 industry partners that also provide certificates for IT skills. Uh, the learner can use a mobile phone, they can take the course, and they can get the certificates once they, once they pass. So this uh, current coronavirus disruption is really a wake-up call for everyone in the education community. And for Coursera specifically, we came up with two initiatives, which I'd like to share with you today, which are free initiatives to help uh, learners uh, globally. The first, and I'm going to put this, this on the chat screen so everyone can access the links. The first is for universities and ministries of higher education globally. We are giving access for free to up to 5,000 students enrolled per university in any country in the world. And already we've seen a high take up rate. We have close to 1 million students that have taken up this program in the last four weeks globally, coming from hundreds and hundreds of universities in the world. They have access to 3,800 of our courses and the certificates up until the 30th of September in that first program for students. The second program is for unemployed people. Because of the success of, and the demand we saw from the students taking up the first offer, we recently launched just two weeks ago a second program for globally unemployed citizens. And we're giving essentially 50,000 registered unemployed people per country access to our 3,800 course catalog. And this will also include certificates and very specific job tailored uh, training. So I'd like to share both of those with you, and I hope that your ministries of labor, ministries of education, and universities will partake in this free program to help uh, learners being disrupted at the moment. We look forward to collaborating with all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Chad. Thank you very much. For, we really appreciate uh, the uh, contribution from Coursera uh, to the whole world, and uh, something uh, particular for Africa will be also expected from you. Thank you very much. And uh, now um, the next partner, uh, who is also a member of uh, UNESCO coordination and whose name was already mentioned by the Category 2 Center in uh, Shenzhen, that is the Weidun Cloud uh, <laughs> Education Cloud. The screen is yours, Mr. Shen. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Zhang. Uh, hi, uh, Ido, hi, uh, Anne, and hi, uh, every partner and also uh, every country representative. We are very happy to be here with you today. And as um, we already mentioned several times, uh, we don't education is a key partner of um, UNESCO. And uh, we uh, did a lot during the COVID uh, crisis uh, in China and also in other countries. 
So in China, we help uh, lots of uh, schools, lots of teachers and uh, students to keep a uh, link between, uh, between schools and uh, students and also uh, offer them platform and uh, online courses, online contents to help them to uh, follow their studies. And also in other countries in Asia and also in Africa, we, um, uh, on one hand, we help the universities to have some new equipments uh, with um, smart classroom and also with the broadcasting system. And also we are very uh, closely um, linked with uh, some countries in Africa, like uh, Cote d'Ivoire, like uh, Congo, Pazaville, like also Senegal, to think about how we don't can contribute in their virtual university uh, setting up. Because we know um, from uh, more than uh, six or seven weeks, uh, lots of students, uh, lots of um, uh, participants, they can't go back to, to school, but they should continue their uh, pedagogy, uh, pedagogy activities. So, so that's why virtual university and also open university, uh, these are two new definitions that uh, lots of uh, African colleagues mentioned during this meeting uh, could be welcome uh, to um, have uh, our help and also, also, of course, with help with other partners. And we can uh, set up together this uh, new concept, uh, open university or virtual university to combine, of course, platform, combine contents and also combine uh, uh, online tutoring and online uh, teaching activities to help students to keep link with their university and also perhaps in the future to help uh, universities and also African countries to move quickly, more quickly probably uh, in their digitalization of their education system, uh, both in high education and also in vocational education. Because um, if uh, students and the teachers, they uh, have uh, some uh, good uh, habits now to use uh, Virtual class, uh, virtual class, and virtual university system. They can really also uh, in the future, uh, even after the crisis, to use this uh, new concept to be much more uh, efficient uh, to use mm -hmm. online contents and online resources. And also, we can save time because we don't have enough time in lots of countries to uh, uh, have some new buildings, to have new uh, schools, and the new physical uh, universities. But with a virtual university system we can uh, promote uh, very quickly and largely uh, all uh, contents and all new competencies. So that's okay. what we don't would like to, uh, to do it with, of course, UNESCO uh, regional representative offices and also with other partners here. Thank you, okay. Dr. Jan. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much, <laughs> Mr. Zhang, and we really appreciate uh, your contribution to, uh, to the continent. And I'm sure that there will be more uh, and uh, broader collaborations between uh, your uh, company and uh, the uh, universities and TVET institutions uh, in Africa. Thank you very much. Thank now you. it's my pleasure to invite uh, a very uh, close partner with, uh, in Africa and who owns uh, a very uh, regional, broad, uh, big television network. Uh, it is uh, Star Times. Who is the representative, Miss Meng? Or hello, Start Times. Hi, hello. Hi. This is, yeah, yeah. Hello, this everyone. Is this is uh, Vicky speaking from Start Times. Okay, okay go so ahead. Uh, hi, everyone. Yeah, and it's an honor for me to part uh, for Start Times to participate in this conference, and we are happy to have this chance to interact with uh, different partners and UNESCO well um, we find that we find that most of the solutions like uh, currently has already been pro pro proposed are more based on the internet and data so which gives us an advantage in provide our solutions which might assist in uh, tackling the challenges currently the education in African faces. So first, I would like to give a brief introduction about our company. So we are a pay TV network operator, and also we produce our own content, and we are also content provider in Africa. We have been running uh, our TV networks in Africa for uh, over two decades, and our uh, headquarters is in Beijing. So currently, 
we have our own uh, TV networks and also we have our own application which could be available on mobile band. And also we have uh, a very large followers on our social media which the num total number is supposed to 10 million followers on social media. And uh, for, uh, so, so I like to also introduce to you our three platforms. So first of all is our DVB network which is uh, uh, just in case if some uh, partners in other industries doesn't really familiar with that. It is our TV network, which we already have 13 million DVB users across this continent. And also we, our application, uh, our OTT end, we have more than 20 million OTT users. Um, and also, just uh, as I mentioned, we have 10 million followers on social media, which give us very big advantage in reaching like, um, you know, the audience from different countries. So um, currently we are running in more than 30 African countries. We are broadcasting more than 600 authorized channels on our platform. And we are broadcasting uh, in more than 10 different languages, including English, French, Portuguese, and a lot of African local languages like uh, Hosa and also Yoruba, like in Nigeria and Chinese and Hindi, etc. So, um, and also like in since 2018, China, uh, Star Times has undertaken a national, or we, we can say it's an international project, which calls 10,000 Villages Project. This project is aimed to help the uh, African audience in the most remote areas that could have the Get, get access to the information and get access to the satellite TV. So Star Time undertake this project and we have been uh, helping uh, like 10,112 villagers in 23 countries to get access to satellite TV throughout this continent. So, uh, you know, like, uh, just like, yeah, uh, when it comes to the challenges like uh, the African education has is that, you know, most of the education happens when, I mean, most, most of the, I mean, it's easy for the urban student to get access to education. And for the student who might have some problems reaching to the schools, they can choose online education. However, the data is very expensive in Africa and also it's not so cheap to get a mobile, like a mobile phone, and it's very One expensive minute, to please. get a phone. Sorry. Sorry? One more minute. One more okay, minute, okay, no problem. Okay, okay, so with the current networks we have, the broadcasting network, and also our uh, OTT, our application, we, uh, we have the ability to provide the technical and also the networks for, uh, to carry more content, to reach more audience uh, in a very cheap way. However, we uh, have to say that currently we don't have enough educational resources. So we are also very much looking forward to cooperate with the universities in Africa and also our other partners that participate in this conference. Uh, if you could provide more resources, educational resources, like videos, like classes, we are very willing to undertake this task and help to provide our own contributions to the African education, especially the higher education and the vocational education. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much for the uh, introduction. And now it's my pleasure to uh, invite uh, the last, but definitely not the least, uh, a, a partner. Uh, the only one uh, I'm not familiar with uh, at this webinar, that is uh, CD Networks. Hello? Yes. Yes. Hello, thank hear you. you. Go ahead. My Three pleasure. minutes for you. Okay. Uh, good, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Tim Zhou, uh, the CEO of CD Networks. I'm delighted and proud to be here today in order to join and support the Global Education Coalition organized by UNESCO. Uh, CD Networks was founded in 2000, and over the past 20 years, we have expanded globally to become one of the world's uh, largest content delivery network providers with the global infrastructure footprint covering most of the world we live in today. C Networks has helped many organizations delivering content in the regions where the traditional net internet found it to be difficult. And we hope to use our robust experience to 
help deliver in the hard to reach regions. As a content delivery network provider, we accelerate and secure the internet based content. We have 1,500 pop of presence and 12 global offices to deliver 24 by 7 service to our customers around the world. Our vision is to remain at the forefront of the cutting edge technology that accelerates and secures the internet for all type of contents, like the video to help teachers and students to connect or the, like the course where the students will need to download to complete their homework. As a global enterprise, we take our corporate social responsibility series. So becoming uh, coalition members could definitely enable CNLX to work close with UNESCO to best leverage our network's infrastructure located both in and around Africa to deliver our service to the academic institutions anywhere in Africa. So what can we do today to help? Uh, we have pop in South Africa, both Cape Town and Johannesburg, Tanzania, and Egypt and Djibouti. Plus we have another 15 pops near Africa that could be used for the continent. We understand that the large scale adoption of online education will likely result in high concurrency, network congestion and increased cybersecurity threats so we will ensure that we provide students and the educational institutes in Africa with the best in-class service and security to make sure all are protected online. CNLX will provide UNESCO with our platform and technology via our performance acceleration solutions, which accelerates web-based content and also help deliver content and application with optimal performance. Our security solutions will help secure higher education provider with cyber threats as an added layer of protection. We are glad to work with all coalition members starting with proof of the concepts and see how we can best deliver the performance for institutions in Africa. A lot of you may already be aware of Moodle, the open source learning platform we are now working with the largest Moodle partner in Africa for large scale deployment in higher education sectors. So we plan to work together as a team to help this fight against the COVID-19 and deliver e-learning service in Africa. Uh, together we will, we will provide every student the smooth access to the internet and knowledge. Hope we will work on this challenge time. Uh, thank you very much. That's all. Oh, you finished. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for your uh, contribution and participation. Before uh, giving uh, the floor back to uh, my colleague, Ms. Andres, uh, I'd like to say that uh, our partners, they are from different regions and uh, different uh, backgrounds. Uh, they are coming with different resources. And some of the partners, for instance, uh, Commonwealth of Learning, because of time difference, they couldn't join us. However, all of us, we share the same passion and uh, eagerness to work together with colleagues in Africa and to better support uh, students and teachers in Africa uh, so that we can uh, um, find a better solution, not just during the COVID, but also in a long um, perspective. Thank you all very much again. And now uh, back to Anne. Okay, thank you very much, uh, um, Tao. Thank you to all the partners. Like you have said, there are lots of resources that they have brought out. We've received a number of questions already coming from um, those that are following the live streaming on Facebook. There are questions about costs, like I mentioned before. And um, let me very quickly just reply because we are, so we are moving towards the closing, except if there are some burning issues that others want to bring up. Really, when it comes to the cost, this is about a time when governments have to realize that we, in, in looking at post-COVID, we must start right now to build better. And how do we build better? We, we consider investments, important investments, that will look at the, the weak infrastructure that has put us in this situation of panic. So therefore, it's not a question of the UN bringing resources uh, to address issues of infrastructure. It is something that we would have to negotiate with all the partners that want to su support the COVID response, along with government, to make investment, the right choices in investment of the infrastructure 
The internet infrastructure is one such investment. There's another question that's asking about uh, the blueprint on the ground. The, the essence of this meeting is just to give an expose of what's out there, what's possible, and what a university should begin to look at. And um, we have developed a strategy that is going to have this um, national launches where we dialogue with ministries of education, ministries of infrastructure, and the partners on the ground to look at alternatives because we do not really have to begin to consider just trying to uh, return to in pre-COVID times. Post-COVID means a real disruption too. We have to disrupt the way we do business. We have to disrupt the way we even deliver education. Do we still have to, to continue with this idea of a delivery that is very much specific to one space, or to, to a place? No, given the fact that some of these resources coming are really uh, uh, being piloted from somewhere else. So therefore, if we have to respond to access, if we have to respond to equity, if we have to respond to quality, we have to begin to think differently on how we deliver education. The disruption will be massive, but so we are going to start now looking at that disruption. There are questions about assessment, and I think there's been responses to it. In fact, the, the, the beautiful aspect of e-assessment is that it will really address issues of examination malpractices, because we spend so much on really the process of organizing examinations than really the, the, the output. So therefore, using technology is going to build that advantage, and it is already something we are discussing. Um, there are some other discussions about the focus. Really, the focus is across the education sector. It's also looking at you know, the informal sector. So really, we are opening up the space for tech for all, which is one of the Huawei's word. Um, I know Lou is there listening, and this is the moment for us to make it a reality, tech for all, in, in the education formal system, the informal system, and the non-formal system. There's also been a question that's asked about um, people with disability. Actually, they are not left behind. UNESCO and UNICEF are working together in responding to issues of ICT for uh, the, the, the persons with the physically challenged. So I am not sure whether um, we can take it to scale just yet, but it's really being piloted. And I'm sure there will be resources um, available from the partners that can speak to that. Um, and then uh, finally, I see a question that is more about um, the pedagogy. And that's also a very pertinent question. Uh, is um, very often when we talk about technology, um, there is a fear that teachers would be um, replaced by technology. But I really want to assure all of you that it would empower the, the role of the teacher to be the facilitator that is needed. Earlier on, I was mentioning the fact that as we get excited about technology and connectivity, let's really understand that we have to be very measured in the way we look at things. And um, it's not all going to be uh, just a internet connectivity because as I in initially started talking about the, the infrastructure, the infrastructure is not just about the internet. We also know that we have the energy infrastructure to deal with. We have um, uh, issues of uh, power cut, and, and therefore we cannot just depend completely on uh, the, the, the main grid. We have to also look at alternative sources of energy. And uh, here in Africa, there is no reason why we should talk about energy where we are blessed with so much sunshine. So I really believe this is also the time for governments to, to, to address other weak systems apart from building a, a more robust education system that is not very dependent on building, like somebody say, more classrooms and buying more chairs. It's more of really going virtual, but virtual in two respects, using internet and using intranet. And I think the more we begin to look at that, um, the better, because um, the digital library idea has already shown the way on how we can really um, bring resources without necessarily using internet. And it's the same that applies 
in the idea of building resource centers uh, through which um, with the work with we, we can the dialogue we can have with telecom telecoms uh, we will be able to help project also um, the the booster for it to be able to reach some of the pockets um, that are not able to uh, benefit from internet it's it's something similar if you just want to know like when you talk about community radios it, it really addresses the the hard to reach so this is uh, also another opportunity of low tech that we should explore. There is also the issue of um, mobile phones. We have heard about it, that maybe in terms of equipment and, and connectivity, uh, we have a density of the mobile phone more than uh, we have uh, of um, the internet connectivity in general, in terms of the, 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 the laptops and stuff like that. And I also want to say, this is the moment um, I, I see my friend Yusuf is online, and Yusuf knows how we struggle through the practice where we were to benefit eight universities um, to really um, come on board. And I believe that's where um, Ivory Coast has been able to have an advantage. Uh, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, sorry, has had an advantage in really building from uh, that project that was uh, sponsored by UMWA. I hope this would be a moment where lecturers would realize that they have also to have their capacities built, as has been demonstrated. If we are afraid of technology, we won't be able to engage. And the fourth industrial revolution demands that we change the way we do business. We cannot continue looking at technologies that are kind of outmoded and focusing on it. Yes, it can be permitted in responding immediately that we look at some of these old technologies, but we have to have the foresight in building back better. We must really be prepared to have that dialogue, but at the level of the governments, at the level of universities, and at the level of the partners, the public-private partners. I believe um, my colleague from UNDP mentioned it. Yes, we are looking at public-private partnership, and uh, the global um, coalition has demonstrated that there's a lot of goodwill. Uh, we've heard uh, partners talking about their social corporate responsibility. So, I mean, we must not look at one that makes us very dependent, but we should look at a partnership that is mutually uh, reinforcing um, the, the contribution that we will, will make to humanity. COVID-19 has struck and it has shown us that it doesn't help for us to amass everything in one area alone. Um, it doesn't help if we have this huge divide between those who have and those who do not have. It doesn't help if we have a, a section of uh, humanity enjoying all the technological um, prowess and another not necessarily able to cope. So the best way in, it, in, in, in which we can live together in peace and harmony is by sharing. And I, I, I really applaud the partners and what they are bringing uh, to this uh, challenge. I now call upon the universities also to be prepared as we go on to, to exchange there's the opportunity uh, for you to, to, to really indicate the kind of partnership that you want to enter into. Uh, you can really try to uh, reach us so that we will bring them to you. We will go country by country as we've already started and engage so that at least first we start from where we are, what are the gaps and what are some of the, the, the parameters that would be uh, put in place for us to engage. And so, um, ladies and gentlemen, we can go on and on, but we have gone past um, the, the, the period that was scheduled for our exchange. We cannot exhaust it here. This is just to give you a tidbit of what is possible. We are not really going back. We are going forward and it's going to be a disruption that will continue. So let's prepare for this disruption, but let's prepare to really make sure we make the right choices. We make the right investments to build the human capital that can transform uh, this continent. We have heard from various interventions that indeed uh, what we are building for is not just one in which we want to really accumulate knowledge for the sake of it. We want to combine knowledge, skills, and the ability to really be employed or employ others or what have you. 
in, in, in addition, it is not just a, a question of academia. It's a question of academia responding uh, to the needs of society, be it economic, social, political, or what have you. And in, as we speak, we need to really reinforce uh, the, the research and scientific knowledge. We must really uh, promote STEM education for all so that we do not have to depend and wait for solutions from outside. Yes, they can really give us a support to get started, but no, we should really begin to build world-class institutions, whether they are at the university level, whether they are at the level of uh, laboratories, but we need to really begin to, 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 to engage at a different level. I want to really appreciate uh, the African Union because the vision is clear. They are even looking at how do they connect the Pan-African universities uh, through uh, a virtual hub. That is a good thing. The UNESCO is also working with UNICEF to ensure that um, we, we develop what we call uh, regional hubs, where we will have a repository of documents, of uh, um, uh, tools, uh, resources that universities, school system, education uh, um, uh, um, ministries can go to and really help themselves to what could really help strengthen what they are doing. We also work with IGBA, and IGBA has been doing a very marvelous job trying to really organize weekly webinars to, to sensitize and to create greater awareness of the possibilities of doing things differently. So in closing, I want to thank Ido, thank all of those who have made this possible, thank the audience that have really stayed the duration of this meeting, and thank our partners in particular. This is but the beginning. From here, we are going to move from country to country and just get prepared and organize yourself so that we can have dialogue that are more context specific and that can respond to the needs that you are all expressing in different ways. I want to thank in particular uh, um, Aruna also that took time and it was very early in the morning from New York to join us and really helped us also to embrace the fact that what we are doing here, it is not just UNESCO, it is not just UNEP, it is the whole of the UN system that, that puts so much emphasis on human resource development. Our colleague from the Dakar office is, is, is a co-convener for a very important issues-based, opportunities and issues-based coalition. So for us, what we are looking at is COVID-19, yes, yes, it's a human tragedy, but it is also an opportunity to really address some of the inequities, some of the inequalities, some of the poor, low quality of our education system to be able to be more responsive to sustainable development. On that note, dear colleagues, I want to thank you. I want to appreciate all of you who have joined us, those who are with UNESCO, those who are within the UN system, and those who are from different institutions. I thank you all for your kind attention. And God bless you. Stay safe and stay protected. I don't know Good whether Ido is still there. Bye you bye. have anything to say before we close, no. Ido? No, no, I'm just to say thank you to you, to all the participants, and thank you very much for your inspiring uh, concluding words. Thank you okay. to everybody. Be safe. God protect us. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Tao, and your team. Thank you yeah. for yeah. the support you, you gave us uh, uh, the Abuja office and the Ciao. Nairobi office. Bye. Thank you, Tao. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bye, thank you. Thank you very much. Merci. Merci à tous.